service has started. It's good to be back in the house of the Lord this morning and hope everybody's uh, feeling real good and, and uh, looking forward to the reading of God's Word. We want to try to read some from the 1st John 5, chapter 5. 1st John, chapter 5, verse 1. There's some things here that we want to try to uh, talk about the uh, the three things that bears witness in the earth and the three things that bears witness in heaven. And uh, <clears throat> we got a few scriptures marked out that we wanted to read with this. So in verse 1 of chapter 5 of first of the book of 1 John, Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Now this is <clears throat> a belief not of the mind but of the heart Amen. Know, the mind is uh, unruly as the tongue is and it uh, carries us around and uh, lets things uh, go on in our body or get thoughts in our, in our system that we don't need but here he said whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God and everyone that loveth him that begotteth loveth him also that is begotten of him so we're talking here of the Lord Jesus Christ and of God. But he says, But this we know, that we love the children of God when we love God and keep His commandments. So he is going on to say here this morning that uh, for this uh, for this we know, uh, and we should know this morning whether or not we love our brothers and sisters. I, I know uh, my brother and my sister in the flesh, I love them. I try to uh, uh, be with them some and, and all, and, and I still sometimes get upset at them. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's the same way with a uh, spiritual brother or sister. I love them, and uh, I try to uh, uh, be as uh, prayerful for them as I can, but sometimes uh, I get upset with them. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times I don't confess it to them, but the thing of it is, that's, it's, it's, it's just the flesh uh, kind of taken over. But here we see that uh, in verse 3, for this is the love of God that we keep His commandment, commandments, and His commandments are not grievous. Now, we want to talk to in just a few minutes here about in 2 John 4 concerning the commandments. 2 John in verse 4, it says, I rejoice greatly that I found of thy, of thy children walking in truth as we have received a commandment from the Father. Amen. And now I beseech thee, lady, not as though I wrote a new commandment unto ye thee, but that which we had from the beginning, <clears throat> that we love one another. Mm -hmm. And here is all, uh, you know, they're the, in the, the commandments, uh, the two that love thy neighbor as thyself, and or we should uh, love our brothers and sisters ourselves. It says uh, that both of these hinge on on the same thing that we should love one another, Amen. and that we should pray for one another, and that we should understand that none of us is perfect, and none of us can uh, 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 stay. Uh, like we should, but that we need to confess. We need to confess our sins, mm -hmm. and that that is the that is the key here. And if we confess our sins, He is just and faithful to forgive us. Amen. And here again, that we could obey what He says here, that we love one another. Notice, and this is love that we walk after His commandments, and this is the commandment that as. Ye have heard from the beginning, ye should walk in it. So, if this is the, the, the scripture that I wanted to read. And then I want you to turn with me, if you would, to John, the book of John, in the 14th chapter, in the 15th verse. John, chapter 14, and verse 15. The Bible says, and Jesus is talking, if you love me, keep my commandments. Amen. And I will pray the Father, 
and he shall give you another comforter that ye that he may abide with you forever even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not neither knoweth him but ye know him for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you Amen. and so this morning uh, we that are saved and when we get out of the will of the Lord the Holy Spirit will deal with our souls mm -hmm. now I know he will yeah. I know he will because he does it with me mm -hmm. and the Holy Spirit when the Holy Spirit deals with you you need to listen Amen. and you need to pay attention because it's for your betterment it may it may tear you up on the inside and, and i have i've had it but listen it's the best thing in this world for you is to listen to what the holy spirit says and Amen. obey it and uh, you'll find out in the days to come that you'll be uh more at ease with yourself and with god so this is this is what he says here in verse three of our lesson for this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. In other words, his commandments that he tells you, uh, the word grievous is not hard to bear. And so well, this morning, they're not grievous. Now, notice this in verse four. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. Amen. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. And so this morning we're, we're trying to study about keeping the commandments and we're trying to talk to you about loving one another. And we're talking this morning, trying to, uh, to enlighten you or to bring back to your remembrance the things that you need to do in order to uh, be at ease with yourself and to be in line with the Lord Jesus Christ. And so this is in verse verse 5. Uh, Whoso, who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. And I well, think this morning that uh, a lot of times, you know, we, we, uh, we say things and we think things and we don't give God the credit. We're not, we're not really in there like we should be. Mm -hmm. Whosoever loveth God, or whosoever loveth the Lord Jesus Christ. And you, and you, 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 you ask people, about, oh yes, I love him, I love him, I love him. And Peter said the same thing. Mm -hmm. and, but I, I, I'm saying this to say this, that we need to be more sincere about what this little tongue says and what this old big mind thinks than we are because we need to be closer to the Lord and we need to try to follow him in a way that would be pleasing to him. So here we go again in this verse 6. This is he, and it's talking about the Son of, of God. This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the spirit that beareth witness because the spirit is truth. Now we're going to see here some things that, uh, the, that John was writing here concerning the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and I, I got, was trying to study about the baptism of Jesus Christ. And in, in John, I believe it's in John 1, uh, I think it's John uh, I don't think, but, but anyway, he says, John, as he was looking, he said, Behold the Son of God, that behold he that cometh is the Son of God. But anyway, the baptism of Jesus Christ uh, is, is a identification for Jesus Christ. Now, uh, Matthew's Gospel gives an account of this baptism. And Matthew, I believe it is, uh, three. Let me get to it where it's at. Matthew three and verse thirteen. I think it is. Matthew three thirteen. In uh, in this it says, "Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to jo to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him, but John forbade him." Or said, no, wait a minute, there's something that I need 
that you've got and you're asking me for something I've got. Now, he said, but John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me? And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so, or permit it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. Now, my, my thought on this is, listen, John said to Jesus, Jesus, I need your baptism because you are perfect. And I know you are because God told me that you were coming. Mm -hmm. And so Jesus says to him, suffer it to be so now. In other words, John, you go ahead and do this. For thus it be becometh us. Now, I want I want to try to, to say this to you this morning, and, and I, uh, you know, he was not talking, I don't believe, he was not talking about John, us, but he was talking about him and God. Jesus says here, because John could not fulfill the righteousness. And so, and, and, and if I'm wrong on this, or if I, if I just, just I, don't, I don't want to pitch nothing out here that's, this, you know, but anyway, uh, the Lord, uh, as I was trying to study this, and I, I wondered, why did he say that when John already told him, hey, I need something from you. Now, the fulfilling of the righteousness was that Jesus Christ and God would be identified together. Because in the scriptures, God and Jesus is praying and God and Jesus... And, 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 and Jesus says to him, uh, honor, honor me. And he says, I have honored you. And he honored him here with the spirit that ascended on him when John baptized him. And he said it, uh, uh, it, it ascended and set on him as a dove. Mm -hmm. And he honored him. And he said, I have already honored you. And he was talking about his death on the cross. He says, and I will honor you again. Notice now. And uh, in this, uh, in the, in, in, in this, uh, and in verse 16, and Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were open unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove, and lightning upon him, and lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And so he was honoring him there again. But now back in our lesson, notice here, in, in for, back in First John, as we get into this, he says, uh, in verse, well, where am I at? I've done lost my place. Y'all bear with me. Seven. I got First John 5, so... John 15. Okay, 1 John, now in verse, and now notice in verse 6. This is he that came by water and blood. Now, we have seen the water, and we have seen the Spirit here. Mm -hmm. Notice, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. Now, Jesus had not come by blood, yet he had came by water. And in, in, in these scriptures, you'll see that Jesus, as he was talking to his mother, and as he talked to his brother one time about asking him to go up to the city, or all, but he says, my time has not yet come. Now, the time for him to be uh, honored by blood had not come. Now, notice, and it, in verse, uh, in verse, uh, the latter part of verse 6, but... Uh, and it is the Spirit that beareth witness because the Spirit is truth. Now, the Spirit bear witness here at the baptism. Amen. And the water bear witness. So, notice, for there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. And these three are one. Now, look in, in John again, if you would, in the book of John. One, one. And you know, this, this may, I hope this will be a help uh, uh, to you. Uh, it was to me. 
uh, because I've seen something that I never had seen before. In verse 1 of, of, of John 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Amen. And the same was in the beginning with Him. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. So we want to see here uh, this, this, what else was here. The light, now we see here that, that we've got the Father and Jesus Christ because God is the Father and the Word is Jesus Christ. Now the Spirit, now listen. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. This is the Spirit because the darkness could not understand it, didn't comprehend it, but he says there uh, in verse 9 of the same thing, uh, that was the uh, well, let me read it in 8. He was not the light, but was sent to bear witness of that light, talking about John the Baptist. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. So we see here in this that the Father, the Son, and the Spirit are, are, are all at one, all at one, are, are together here. And this is this is what we see here uh, for in verse seven of our lesson. For there are three that bear record in heaven: Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. So that that one's there. But notice here, and there are three that bear witness in the earth, the spirit, the water, and the blood. Now we've seen, we've seen the spirit when Jesus was baptized. Now we again seen him in the water representing the grave and the death, burial, and resurrection. But notice here, the blood was missing. So we have to go to Jesus' death on the cross in order to see the blood, which was the last thing to identify him with. Because the water had identified him, and the water came forth with blood, the water identifying Jesus Christ, and the blood identifying Jesus Christ. Amen. So here we see, this is what he says. Now, in verse 8, And there are three that bear witness in the earth. I mean, uh, uh, let's see. Uh, in the in the heaven, I'm going to see it in verse seven. For there are three that bear record in heaven: the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And there are three that bear witness in the earth. This is when he was killed. The the Spirit we see it ascend on him, and the water we see as it gushed forth from his side, or when he was baptized, and the blood when he was when he was crucified. And these three agree in one. And so these, this is this is this is the witnesses that that was that presented Jesus Christ to the world. And so when we come back to the thing of uh, of what John of what Jesus told uh, John there it, that he needed that when John said what he did to Jesus, but he said it is necessary that you baptize me in order for us to fulfill the scripture. Amen. And I believe that he wasn't talking about John having fulfilled the scripture as much as he was. He was identifying himself with the Father. Us. I think. Now, and, and if I'm wrong, correct me, and I may be wrong. But, but it makes it makes sense to me that John telling Jesus, hey, I have need of thee to be back. And he was not he was not perfect. But the, 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 the Son of God was, was perfect, and the Father is perfect, and they can, uh, uh, well, I can't even say what the word I'm trying to say, they can accomplish what would need to be done by presenting Jesus Christ as the Savior of the world. Amen. So, I mean, you can think about all these things, but it don't change nothing. But I, wanted, I want you to know this, that Jesus Christ and God deserves all of the glory. No man, no man deserves the glory like they did. Amen. So that's my point in bringing this out. But now notice, as we get on with the lesson, uh, in verse 9, 
If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he hath testified of his Son. And so this, to me, says what has happened there at the, uh, at the baptism of Jesus and at the death of Jesus Christ. So he says here, He that believeth on the Son hath the witness in himself, and he that believeth not God hath made him a liar. So if you believe, if you, if you can believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, if you with a, with a saved soul can believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, you're saved. Mm -hmm. Amen. And listen, you say, yeah, but sometimes I, it don't, it ain't there. Yeah, yeah, that is the flesh. Mm -hmm. The flesh cannot believe it because it don't believe in God. And don't believe in the Son of God. Listen, Amen. you don't. You can say what you want to. You can you can do whatever you want to. But the flesh, you put no confidence Amen. in. Amen. Because it is evil and it will lead you astray if you don't contain it, if you don't uh, persecute it, if you don't uh, just keep it under control. And so here, he says here, in verse 11, and this is the record that God has given to us, eternal life, <clears throat> and this life is in his Son. Amen. And so we uh, have eternal life living within us that love God. If we, from the Spirit, love God and believe that Jesus Christ is his Son, we have eternal life. And there's no question about where your soul will go when you, it leaves its body. There's no question about where this body will go when it's resurrected. Because it's going to go to be with that spiritual soul that has already went ahead. And you're going to be in the presence of the, 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 the God of glory. Amen. There's, there's, no, there's, no, there's, no, there's, no, there's no, no question about it. And so this is what you have to have in order when the devil comes to you using that flesh and say and, and telling you these things and saying these things to you and causing doubt to come in your mind because he is the master Amen. of that. Now, I have the opportunity to witness to a, a lady the other day and she, I, was, I was talking to her about the devil. And uh, I said to her, I said, well, the devil is like a little feist dog. And God has got him on a leash. Amen. Now listen, people. When God has got the devil restrained, he can go so far. So, you may hear the bark. You may feel that hot breath of that little feist uh, uh, barking at you. But listen. Don't you forget who's got a hold of the rope. Amen. And that's another thing this morning. Don't you forget who has got you in his hands and his hands is in God's hands. Amen. Don't you, don't you forget that because listen, it's the most, it's the most satisfying, the most refreshing, the most of anything that you can have when, when trials come. When, when heartaches come, listen, you know that God is there. And you say, well, God, why don't you hurry up and do something? He will. He'll do it in his own time. Amen. He'll do it. And so, what in this world do we have to worry about? Well, the flesh. Yep. That's what we have to worry about is the flesh. Just keep it under control and uh, try, try to serve the Lord. Because uh, you ain't going to be here much longer. Amen. None of us, none of us are going to be here much longer. And one day we'll fill a hole in the ground. Mm -hmm. Or we'll say, uh, he'll, he'll say, come up here and we'll be gone. But until that time, we need to love one another. We need to pray for one another. We need to serve God in a way that is pleasing to him. And Amen. 
uh, you know, uh, it's it's uh, it's it's so it's it's such a it's such a, a, a great privilege and a great such an honor to for a person to be able or have the opportunity to be a witness for the Lord. Amen. Because listen, people, we just we just do not we just cannot understand we cannot we cannot put our grips around how important God is. Right. How great Jesus Christ is and how what he did for us by coming to this world and dying for us on the cross and shedding that blood and that water for us. And so this morning I hope that the, some of the words that we have read will be a help to you. Amen. And, and an encouragement because listen, hey, it's going to happen again next week. It's going to happen again next week. It right. happened last week, didn't it? And it happened the week before that. The devil's going to come around. He's going to tempt you. He's going to tease you. He's going to try his best to run you aground. But listen, remember this, that God has got the final say. He's Amen. In charge. He's in charge of the devil. So uh, just go about your business and say, well, Lord, I'm in your hands. Mm -hmm. That's all That's all you can do because, hey, He's able to take care of you. And I know this morning that that's the message. I know that's the message that you want us to hear this morning. Because I needed it. And you needed it. Man. Because if you hadn't needed it, I couldn't have done it. Mm -hmm. So I thank you this morning for uh, your prayers. And I thank you for listening uh, to uh, the class and, and the lesson. And, uh, Pray that you know find a lodging place in your heart, and you can go away uh, today uh, joyful, cheerful, and thanking the Lord that you've been in the house of God. Thank Man. you all so much.